Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Jim. I make video tutorials here every week about photography and primarily post-processing. Today I'm in Luminar Neo. And by the way, if you're new and heck, if you're old, well, you're not old, but you know what I mean if you've been here before. If you're a previous viewer and haven't yet subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Luminar Neo is this close, like this close, I think, to coming out. It, it's coming real soon. I'm gonna be making a whole lot of tutorial videos about it, including a multi-part tutorial series for those of you that are new to Luminar Neo. So stay tuned for all that. Subscribe to uh, be sure and keep up with everything that's coming. Let's get into it. Today's video, as the title implied, is this photo. And I'm taking it from this to, I don't know what I'm taking it to. The thumbnail that you saw will show you what I take it to, but I don't know yet because this is unscripted. And what I wanted to do is take a photo that honestly, it's kind of flat. It's not, uh, I mean, I like the photo. This is Nyhaven. I think you pronounce it Newhound or something like that if you're Danish, but this is in the Danish capital of Copenhagen. Absolutely gorgeous city. Honestly, one of the most gorgeous cities I've seen, but this is a photo from what I will call Nyhaven. I know I'm mispronouncing it, I'm sure, but it's kind of flat and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, but the, to me, the photo has promise and the photo could be a lot more colorful but I haven't edited this. I have not been practicing with it. I don't have a script. I don't have my notes in front of me. I'm walking through it because I wanna show you the power of Luminar Neo because I feel very confident that I can turn this into something that has a bit more visual interest. Yes, I'm gonna pop colors. Um, I, I know that there's color in this photo. I can just tell. I mean, there's some color, but there's not enough color for me. I like my color. So what I wanna do is walk through kind of what I would do to a photo like this and share some ideas on how you could possibly get started on an edit when you don't have a plan. So the first tool that I like to approach when I don't have a plan is Accent AI here in Enhance AI. And I honestly, I'll just drag it all the way to the right at 100. Now I wouldn't use it at 100, but it gives me an idea of what will happen to the photo because uh, Accent AI, if you're not familiar with it, does a whole lot of things, but it adjusts light levels, it adjusts contrast, it, it pops color. So you can see what it's done to the photo. Now, I don't like that, to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and go back to zero. But that's a thing that I would do. Another thing that I might would do is come in and just take all the different contrast options in super contrast and just make adjustments to them just to see what kind of stuff I can get out of that because I want to see when I adjust the light levels what kind of look I'm getting to the photo. You can see there, I've got a little bit more pop in color because I'm adjusting contrast. But once again, I don't like that. So I'm back to zero. I am back to, when I hit the before and after, I got nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna reset these edits because I want to have that develop raw. So I'm working off the raw data in my photo. Here we are, I'm gonna just go ahead and jump into it. So for me, generally, the first thing I do is work here in light. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust smart contrast. Yeah, I'm getting a lot back from those highlights, which I like. Maybe bump shadows a little bit. Uh, I think I will go to color. I am gonna go bluer. I definitely like the bluer in those uh, brighter areas. It was uh, basically an overcast day, and I love overcast days for taking photos, but I don't like the overcast look, so I tend to create a little bit more blue temperature, and I'm gonna take the tint a little bit to the right, maybe a little bit of vibrance as well. I think honestly, already I've got a much better photo and I'm just in develop, which is super powerful. It is the tool to start with, number one. And number two, it's also the most powerful tool. So there it is before, that's current state. Now that I've done that, that's a little too blue. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit, but not that much. So it's always an experiment, my friends, of me just moving sliders until I get to a place where I kind of like the slider moves that I've made. I am gonna go look at blacks and whites. I'm gonna maybe lift the whites just a little bit maybe pull down the blacks. That does create a little bit more contrast in the photo. So I think that's a nice thing to do. And I do like curves as well. I might just drop a couple of points here on the line and create a tiny bit more contrast. I don't wanna overdo it. Yeah, I think something like that. I may go into blue and just adjust the midtones and see what happens. I'm gonna pull them to the right, a little too yellow. I'm gonna go to the left, a little bit more blue. If you're not familiar with curves, I did a video about curves in Neo. You can check that out there. Now that I've done all that, I think the shadows need to come up a little bit more. Let me show you the before and after here on develop. There it is, before and after. I'm liking that so far. I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. I'm gonna hit Accent AI now. And so you can see what it's doing now. I think it's actually helping the photo. 
I think it hindered the photo before. Now, I was going to 100, which is crazy over the top, and I don't want to do that here, but I think about a 30 is a nice little accent, no pun intended, but a nice little accent to the photo. There it is before, and there it is after. So, so far, I'm liking what I've got. I want to do uh, something here with Structure AI, which I do a lot, which is basically just to go left with Structure, and I'm going to do about a 25, and all this is is basically by removing structure, you're going left or negative, you're removing structure, it just softens things up. And in fact, I actually might go to about a 30, and I am going to mask it in. So I'm going to paint this in, and I'm going to paint that into the sky and the water. So it's going to be very difficult with just a basic brush mask to get this to be exact. So it's not going to be, but when luminosity masking and things like that come into Luminar Neo, we're going to have a much better time with this and a much easier time. So let me go ahead and do this and then I will uh, catch you up with me. Okay, I've done something about like that. That's close enough for government work. Uh, we're going to call that done. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. I like it. And now looking at it, there's a couple things I want to do. I want to bring up a little bit of uh, some of the warmer tones landscape and golden hour specifically is perfect for that so i'm going to go ahead and hit a little bit of golden hour and you can see that yellow building uh, on the left of that first boat really coming to life but honestly golden hour is fantastic at popping the warmer tones that already exist in an image kind of bringing them to life if there's nothing warm doesn't really help you but it's a wonderful accent piece to warm tones that already exist. And I think that looks really nice. So there's the before and after. Now I am gonna experiment with dehaze and just kind of see what that does to uh, the photo. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I kind of like it actually. Um, I don't use dehaze a lot, but I've had people ask me in videos when it seems like I you know could slash should have used it and ask me why I haven't. And honestly, it's just because I don't always think of it. Um, it's not a tool that I use habitually. So uh, in this case, um, I thought, hey, it's cloudy. It's kind of hazy. Let's see what it does. And it kind of cuts through a little bit of that. Creates also a little bit more pop. I kind of like it. So I think that's a go. Now for moody kind of uh, photos, which you don't have to do this. This is just something I like to do. I tend to use a little bit of mystical. Now it softens up things a little bit as well. So you may want to come in and lift the shadows because it also adds a little bit of darkness uh, in that area because it's creating more contrast, but it does soften things up. So if I look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after. That's kind of brightened a little bit of the sky, which is okay. We're going to I just think uh, I'm going to use super contrast to fix that here in a second. But uh, a little bit of mystical goes a long way to creating a little bit of mood. And I like that in this photo. So I'm going to go with that. And as I said, I'm going to go to super contrast. This highlights contrast is just super powerful. You can see, I mean, if I go to 100, which I'm not going to do, but if I go to 100, it really pops that sky. I mean, if you look at it, I kind of like it. Now it's too blue. But if you look at the before and after, in fact, I think I'm going to leave that and then do something else. I'm going to try to uh, brighten these mid-tones a little bit uh, and shadows as well. So I'm going to play with the balance. See what the balance does? It really just gets that going. Now I'm getting a lot of color. Keep that in mind when you're using super contrast. It will pop color, especially if you've amped up color some a little bit already, which I've only done mostly uh, through a temperature adjustment and the, um, the golden hour adjustment there in landscape. But um, keep in mind that super contrast is super colorful uh, at times as well. So um, I'm going to leave the balance at zero on super contrast, but let me see that before and after. Yeah, before and after. I mean, it's really, um, it's almost acting like a polarizer for this guy. If you look at that, there it is before and after. And it's amping up those reflections too, because this uh, brighter section here uh, in the water there is, uh, it's you know, I'm basically adjusting contrast, so it's not quite as uh, as contrasty, I guess. Um, actually, I think 100 is a little too high. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to go too much, so maybe an 80, still pretty high. But if you look at the before and after this tool, amazing, amazing. Um, I just love that. So. Now, to, now that I've done that, I want to go and I'm going to go, uh, let me look at color harmony and brilliance and warmth. Let me try warmth a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, I, I, I just don't like that. Um, color balance is a great one, but yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to use color harmony here because um, I've got plenty of color to work with. What I need to do is ratchet that back a little bit. And one of the best tools for that is in color in HSL. Now I could come in and do a saturation reduction and a uh, vibrance reduction across the entire photo. And now that I've done that, I actually 
kind of glad that I did. There it is before and after. Pretty subtle, but I'm going to go into saturation of the blue, and I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. Now, I know that I created more blue by adjusting temperature and develop at the very beginning, but I feel like after using super contrast, I have too much blue. It's too intense. I'm pulling that back a little bit, and I might pull back a little bit on the orange and the yellow. Just, again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to go... Actually, you know what? I think I will go kind of low on yellows. I think if I do a negative 40, let me see if the orange does. Yeah, I don't, maybe a negative 15 or 10 or something like that. Let me take a look at this. There it is before, and I like that. I mean, I like color, so that's probably like clown vomit to some of you where it's oversaturated, but for me, I really like that, but it's a little too unreal, so I think that looks better. I'm gonna pull a little bit more back into the blues and maybe pull back a tiny bit on the vibrance. Um, Cause I like that color pop. That's one of the things I wanted to try to get to in the image and hey, I was able to do it. I knew I could, but um, that's the fun of an unscripted edit is you kind of never know, well, not kinda, you don't know what steps you're gonna take. So there it is before and there it is now. And you know, I gotta admit, I, I kind of like that blue. So I'm, I'm gonna go back a little bit, maybe like only a negative five. So let me try that one more time before and after. So now that color adjustment's mostly occurring in those brighter tones, which looks nice, but I think it's a little too much of a reduction. So I'm gonna give back a little bit of yellow and give back a little bit of orange. Hey, you know, we're making it up as we go, my friends, because that's what an unscripted edit is. But yeah, there it is before. I still kinda like that. I kinda like it, but I'm gonna call myself down. There it is now. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. I think that looks good. And truthfully, I think I'm about done. I think what I will do though is add a slight vignette. And what I wanna do is I wanna choose these two boats as a subject. So I'm gonna put the center of the vignette there. And then you can click choose subject again to kinda of lock that in. And I'm gonna go with a pretty slight vignette, but I do wanna increase inner light. It gives a nice little pop to that area. So maybe not that much, but maybe like about a 20. Um, to me, that's kind of the focus of the photo. You see those two boats, my eye goes to them, and then it kind of goes across the rest of the image. So using a vignette is gonna kind of accentuate that, especially when you place the center of the vignette there on those boats, and then brighten it with inner light. So before, and again, I like that, and after, I like that. The only other thing I might would do in a photo like this is go back to Accent AI and hit it one more time. It is gonna create a little bit more intensity, and you gotta be careful because Accent AI colors, light values, contrast, all those kind of things. So you don't wanna go high unless you're really just going for an over the top look, which is kinda like that uh, you know 10 year old HDR kind of look, which is nothing wrong with it. I, I love that kind of stuff to be honest. But um, at zero, you know, the photo's fine. I like it quite a bit, but that Accent AI is a nice little pop. So sometimes I come back and hit it with an Accent AI one more time and I just, I like it. So there we go. I think I'm gonna step away from the ledge, you know, get away from the keyboards, stop moving sliders, and call that an edit. Let's take a look at the before and after. Wow, uh, we came a long way, my friends. That is the base photo, unedited, nothing done to it, fairly flat overall, lacking contrast, lacking color pop and all that. And there it is now. And, and now that I do that, I kinda wanna go into color and reduce the blue. So maybe I'm gonna go do that. I'll just open this tool again, pull that blue down a little bit, and um, I'm gonna go compare the before and after again. Before and current state. You know what, I could sit here and edit all day. I think I'm gonna stick with that. I like it. I was able to bring back the colors. I was able to pop a lot of contrast. I was able to pop quite a, a, a difference in the light values, especially that sky. If you look at it, it almost looks kind of blown out. But the beauty of raw files, they contain so much data, you can really pull that back quite a bit with um, with like the highlight slider, which is what I did. And so there we are, uh, the before, and there it is now. Maybe a little too blue, uh, blue, maybe a little too colorful for some of you guys. That's okay, I'm gonna stick with it. The point is not necessarily what I ended up with. The point is Luminar Neo and all the tools and be able to reuse them and go back allowed me to make such a difference in the photo. That's what I love about this tool. I'm having fun with it. Lots of videos coming. Subscribe, as I uh, said earlier. If you haven't, please, please, I appreciate it. Um, I'll be back here, every, not every day, but many days with lots of Neo videos. Coming soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Love interacting with you all in the comments and that sort of thing, so don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Till then, you guys take care of yourselves, and adios.